Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. So, found a, a discounted uh, Streets of New Capenna bundle, so thought it'd be fun to open that up. Um, so, things that have been going on with me. Hope everybody's surviving this flipping heat wave. Oh my god. Ugh. Oh. Stuff is always. I really don't know what this stuff was supposed to be. Like, I barely get the pop-outs that come in the Commander products. But, ooh, another pretty purple dice. I don't quite get the the plastic or the uh, or those, like, the rice paper on these land packs. I don't, I don't quite get that, but ooh, I do like this look. So, for those of you who love like the aesthetics of New Capenna, I had no idea. They actually commissioned an entire, like, jazz soundtrack, you know, like a retro-themed, you know, big band, smoky lounge-type soundtrack for uh, the new Capenna and uh, the new Capenna launch, and it's actually really good. You can find it, you know, all over YouTube. You just search new Capenna, you know, the soundtrack comes up pretty quickly, but, like, I did not expect them to go that, that uh, far. You know, I miss when they did fun things like this. Like, like, that's actually fun. And I really, really, you know, just just miss whenever they, it felt like they had fun with this stuff. What's funny is today I literally just ordered some cards online. And I swear I'm going to crack some of them today right after I bought them. Or ordered them. Be like, darn it. Vivian, run out of town, um, you know, I've told you guys a thousand times, I love this, I love this set, I love the, uh, Rafine is the only Don, I can't remember his name, this is very heavily obscure, around the archive, <laughs> I guess stealth is another question, sounds like my D&D &D game, voluntary employee, oh, so, yeah, so, you know, active treason, all that stuff. Quays the Augur of Agonies. Oh, hmm. Rakish Revelers. Oh, I love it. The Getaway Car. For those who need to make a quick departure without attracting undue attention. <laughs> Echo Inspector. The rendezvous took place hours ago, but the obscure agent ran the residue with these. Eh, there's that thing. It's a getaway car. That's a nice one. I feel I, I'm just going to be so annoyed because I, I just feel like now that I've bitten the bullet and bought some singles online, they're going to be the ones that I actually get. That's awesome. Speakeasy Sova. Whatever ails your friends. This will cure it for tonight and leave you with a little inspiration for tomorrow. For the family. Rackish Revelers. Hey, I just got that. Xavier Woods. Gathering Throng. A plus one is simply not enough. Civil Servant. Bias Ledge Arsonist. Everything from damaged furniture to inconvenient corpses becomes fuel for Zia Torah's ever burning foundry. I love the Riveteers more than any other family. Pugnacious Pugilist. Oh, Fatal Grudge. Cabretti Charm. Reservoir Kraken. I think I remember this one. You know, it comes in that thing. That might be. They do tap Reservoir Kraken and create a 1 1 blue fish. Huh. This, this thing with the fish is just. You know, you're sleeping with the fishes, but. Psychic pickpocket. Connives when it connives this way, return it to one time, not him. If it, the obscure are too much like the Demir, like seriously, I feel like it's four interesting families and House Demir. Like, is anybody else? Wait, is anybody really a fan of the obscure? I'm asking. Sly Cooper. Glitter manga. 
Street Corners and the Mezio are tantalizing, bizarre, the fantastic, the illicit, and the fake. <laughs> Rocks, Pummela. Prize fight. Oh, that looks cool. Underweight, <laughs> underpaid, underestimated. All right. There. We're going to stockpile. Got a few of these. Another one of him. Another one of him. La Grilla to Magpie. Botanical Plaza. All right. Vaza, keen negotiator. Hey, we got a nice uh, riveteer up in here. Dart opponent creates extra treasure tokens where X number of treasure tokens you created this time. Whenever an opponent casts a spell or activates its ability, if a from a treasure token was spent to cast or activate it, put a plus one, one counter on target creature, then draw a card. Nice. So, I got the riveteer's commander precon. And I'm going to try and make a Blitz slash Beamtown Bullies deck out of it. I'm taking out all of the treasure stuff, what little there is in there. And I'm probably going to take my, um, what's his name? Oh, I took him out. <laughs> I threw I threw him in the, in the Riveteer's deck anyway. Um, the original Baldur's Gate, uh, Ghoul Dragon Commander. The one who has Enrage and he creates a Spirit Dragon token. I literally took him out and swapped him with Jolene the Plunder Queen. So, and I'm actually thinking about adding black to that deck and making it a full-on treasure deck. Even the score. Of course, three less than opponents drawn four more cards this time. Draw X cards. Wow! Obscure Storefront. Volatile Times, a sense of certainty is in high demand. Hmm. And to traverse the Outlands. Wow. Wasn't expecting that. I uh, recently used that card to kill someone with uh, a Valakut the Molten Pentacle in my favorite, uh, my Lord Windgrace Commander deck. Backstreet Bruiser. Oh, that looks like the, uh, with the tentacles. Oh, it's a Cephalid, of course. But that looks like the captain from uh, the Mind Flayer deck. Show you what's in the case. What would be the last thing you ever see? Ah, Pulp Fiction. The backup agent. Boon of Safety. Revel Ruiner. Aw. The Forge Boss. The graveyard Shift. But Adam, buddy, we got more work to do. Suspicious Bookcase. Skybridge Towers, Crew Captain, nice. Corpse Explosion, Fairy Vandal. So it's ironic, I was trying to have, I was actually trying to see if I could get rid of my Gruel uh, Dragon deck, because I feel like I four decks is too many. And then, of course, dragons and, uh, you know, treasure, and it just, it's spiraling out of control. Civic Gardener. Dapper Shield Mate. Very dapper, very dapper. Sky Cryer. Breaking news. Lord Van Xander found dead. Oh, yeah, that's from the story, ain't it? Skewer Charm. Cabretti Charm. Brocus Charm. Maestro Charm. <laughs> Okay, the Riveteer open up these packs is real offended right now. <laughs> Nimble Lossinist. Masked Bandits. That is, those are three Devious. Devious is Raccoonuses. Cemetery Tampering. I'm actually really considering how to make this work. Social Climber. It's all about who you know, darling. And now you're lucky enough to know me. A. Hey. Whoa! Avernox the Mind Flail. Now, crucial was three, three more permanents you don't own. We have your end step exile the bottom card of each opponent's library. As long as you look at them, you cast permanent spells among them. Wow! That is. Wow! What is this from? I don't even remember that. That is. That is eye opening. 
I want to do something with that enchainer. I don't know what, but I want to. Oh, that's beautiful. Called die a strong arm. Oh, a giant axe just slung over the shoulders. Strangle. Capenna Express. Fatal Grudge. Forge Boss. Graveyard Shift. Shattered Seraph. Angel Rogue. Mr. Orfeo the Builder. I love that. I love that art. Gabretti Ascendancy. Oh, wow. Nice. And Obscure Interceptor. Exhibition Magician. There's a bounty to either create a citizen or create a treasure. Getting all those charms except for the Riveteer's charm. Well, at least I'm not getting the cards I bought. And that's a beautiful aquarium. Speak easy for the family. Rack Shrevelers. Syndicate Infiltrator. Tainted Indulgence. Illicit Shipment. Whatever the maestros had ordered, it wasn't what anyone's business, including his. Hypertonic Grifter. Fairy Vandalian. Race's Ring. Hmm. Can't decide if that's good or not. Structural Assault. This is my kind of sideboard card. I really like this card. And then uh, Tenuous Truce. Oh, wow. Gain and champ opponent's end step. You and that carries card or card. When you attack and chain an opponent or a planeswalker to control, or when they attack you, sacrifice. Ah, there we go. You take a swing at me, and this truce is kaput. Capiche? Last pack. Last pack. Can I hope for a bootleg of stash? Nice. We gotta do this again. Join the maestros. Family now, big guy. Grind of goons. The dies two to row. Eh? Illuminator Virtuoso. Wing Shield Agent. Swoop and Protector. Cormella Glamour Thief. Tanical Plaza. Whoa! All right. For the record, this is not one of the ones I bought, but I was considering it. Maybe I upkeep, exile, top card, and play it this turn. Oof. Man. Got one of the good ones. Foil. Oh, that looks good. Plasma Jockey and Foil. Oh, wow. It's Guardian Outcast. Oh, so... Alright, so we can put down that, um... I've punched in two of the uh, two of the Stranger Things cards. Actually, so is that supposed to be the Mind Flayer from the Stranger Things set? Maybe. All right. Well, nice. That that's going in my in my uh, the human precon, the upgraded Sigardia precon. Cause, wow, that is. That is nothing to sneer at. Man. Like, I gotten... You know, you guys remember. You guys see it in my YouTube history. I've gotten all my... Uh, a lot of the... Um, what do you call it? You know, the full boxes. Booster boxes. But, like... I feel like most of my best pulls come from fat packs. And wow. Just Wow. Urbrask looks so awesome there. And I love the new Capen or the uh, the new Phyrexian symbol there. So structural assault. Yeah. After the attack on the Ventoline, the fragile balance of power shattered completely, and the city descended into chaos. Ah, I was wait hoping for a pun where they were going to say everything else shattered after that. Nice. Cabretti Ascendancy. You know, Cemetery Tampering. Bobbin asked the Mind Flail. As I think this might be the Mind Flayer from that one. Corpse Explosion. Traverse the Outlands. Lazy Keen Negotiator. 
even the score. Reservoir Kraken. Get away, car. So that's what they that's what they do when they dump the bodies. Man. Gotta be honest. I'm happy with this. I'm still trying to hunt down the uh the Cabretti precon, but uh I'm not even bothering with uh, the black and white um Baldur's Gate precon. In other news, I'm trying to figure out which of my vampire decks to get rid of. Currently, I have four. I have a terrible, barely paid attention to, like, we're talking from when I started playing Commander, red and black pre-con. Got my Edgar Markov one, which hasn't been touched in forever. Got the, the uh, black and white one that you guys have seen. And then you've got a slightly, and I mean slightly, as in I added some better cards and took out some bad mana. Um, but that's basically it. Slightly upgraded version of the uh, the Mora Progenitor. Streffen. Uh, Mora Progenitor. Precon, which is, again, another Rakdos deck. So you got one Mardu, one Orzhov, and two Rakdos. One of which is pretty bad. Um, so I'm trying to figure out what I should do with those. I'm pretty happy with the Orzov one. And in fact, so when I opened up my Riveteer deck, I never actually, um, I, I would thought about it, but it was just too much to set the camera up and I was just kind of tired at the time. I opened up the promo pack and I got um, that bear that everybody's talking about. And, uh, or not the, um, not the Riveteer deck, the Mind Flayer deck. I got the bear, that legendary bear, and um, a black and white vampire rogue in the in the uh, line art that I'm not a fan of. So, um, thinking about adding that to my uh, Vana Butcher of Magan deck. Yeah, it'll be fun. Actually, my friends have no idea, so this is a little... It's a little fun spoiler I have for the weekend, even you know, even though you know I'm not critical role, I don't stream my D and D. Um, but um, I have a game on the weekends with my friends that I've been DMing, which is pretty much uh, Ixalan Five E Ixalan. Um, I did the module, and now we've been just running it. Um, and right now we're gonna dig into an aging crypt, crypt and find a huge sunbird down there possibly start the apocalypse i wanted to bring it around to like the five uh legendary dinosaurs and then you know like gishath Sun, sun's avatar you know wor then work my way up to the to the uh the three sun avatars and of course eventually see if they can deal with zakama but um what no one knows is that i've i to help my characters along i've had a uh a healer from, who's out of the module, and um, this healer, I've I've basically made the most fail character ever. Like she's intentionally bad to make my players feel good about themselves, but um, no one has any idea that she's about to meet her demise in the next couple of sessions when the actual Vana Butcher of Magan shows up, who's pretty much been like a boogeyman figure throughout. Uh, this campaign, but my friends have, my players haven't actually encountered her yet, and kind of like for those of you who've uh, seen, you know, Mortal Kombat uh, 9, you know, where Kung Lao has this moment of victory, and then he just gets neck snapped by Shao Kahn, I'm basically gonna do that with uh, this healer character, um... Or I guess, you know, if you guys have all seen The Mummy, because currently this this uh, storyline has got a lot of uh, references to The Mummy movie. The good ones. Um, it, it's like that moment where uh, Anox in the Moon just walks up to uh, Evie O'Connell and just shanks her. That's basically what's going to happen. Um, and hopefully it'll shock my players and let them know that, like, the stakes are really rising. So, uh... That's going to be fun. Can't wait to see how my players deal with that. So, um, I'm going to be doing some videos um, that I think, you know, you guys are going to be interested in coming up. Analyze.
realizing a lot of the pre-cons and asking myself, because as I was looking at the Riveteers deck, uh, I was questioning, you know, I get that we want to release cards that are interesting, but like, I don't feel like the Beamtown Bullies have anything to do with that pre-con. There's nothing I want to donate um, in, my, in that deck to my opponent. And it just kind of led me down this rabbit hole of thinking, I kind of want to look at all the pre-cons and all of the so-called potential commanders and just say, how well do they fit into their pre-con decks? You know, it's like, obviously I get that it's a Blitz deck and the front-facing commander has precedence, but then, like, you've also got Jolene in there, Jolene Plunder Queen, and then you've got, um, again, the Beamtown Bullies. And, of course... It's the age-old, well, now we release cards exclusively through Commander sometimes. Um, I get that's why the Beamtown Bullies are, you know, released in that deck. But it's like, do they actually serve that deck in any way? Like, I guess I'm looking for, like, an out-of-the-box opinion. Or I want to do, like, an out-of-the-box evaluation of just, you know, is this thing really that interesting? You know... It's just something I thought I'd, I'd try out, you know, and see if I can get some discussion in the comments what you guys think. Because I was also thinking about the cat deck, the infamous um, Arobo cat deck. And I was thinking about how, you know, the one guy, there's a lot of equipment synergy in that deck. And there's also a lot for the go wide strategy, which is, you know, Arobo himself and one of the other commanders. But then Miri, Weatherlight Duelist, is just literally the card dueling grounds on a creature and i'm like i don't think any of that deck actually fits that creature and it's just it's just an earlier version of it but still it's the old idea that they just want to release these cards whether or not they belong in a in the deck that they come in and i just wanted to kind of look at the you know, basically those, each deck seems to, you know, unspoken rule, have three legendary creatures that be, could be the commanders of the deck. Yeah, yeah, I know, you know, stuff like uh, Jolene, it's a bit of a stretch because she's Gruul and this is Jund, but, you know, for the most part, we all accept that it's three, three possible commanders. So, I wanted to kind of take a look at some of those decks and evaluate all three commanders see what we got out of the box in terms of usability and just see which ones work the best out of the box and which ones like why the hell were you putting this deck because i feel that the more and more because obviously when it comes to like the beamtown bullies as an example you want the worst cards in magic in your deck that you can gift to your opponent you know, if you guys watch the command zone i was thinking like when i popped the deck and this is before i saw game nights which i was really happy to see I, I loved watching a jolene deck powered by a blight steel colossus and treasure synergies win but um you know it was the idea that you know we're talking about gifting through the beamtown bullies stuff like leveler and you know just other you know um not arrogant worm tempting worm and just gifting the worst creatures and magic to your opponent and then just watching them sit and spin while you know everyone else seems to reap the benefits and that's just i i, I don't see anything in that pre-con that lends into the beamtown bullies so it's just something i, I thought of that i want to take you know a bit of a look at you know if you guys aren't interested you know you know probably quit after a couple of them and just do stuff like this, but you know, again, buying magic product is not is not the easiest thing anymore. You know, there's just some special occasions that have happened. So um, I'm trying to I'm trying to get back to being regular with my videos. So um, thank you guys for joining me. I'll see you guys next time. And I highly, highly recommend anyone who's really had fun with this set. Check out on YouTube, you know, it's free, you know, online. Like, check out that amazing soundtrack that they curated for Streets of New Capenna because I'm having a blast listening to it while I do all sorts of stuff. So, thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.